a tour with some international speakers. So, Samuel, he's actually from Mila Milano, isn't it? Um, Gardasi. Oh, okay. So, as you might uh, know, Gardasi, that's Italy, Italian. So, the next speaker is uh, having a, a talk about why I was startup choose a big data project. And, um, of course, I was looking up your, your LinkedIn profile and I saw that you, you're also very much interested into Amnesty International and uh, this uh, digital uh, liberty and rights thing. So it's uh, very interesting to see to have such an audience, an international and open-minded audience. It's uh, something I really like and really enjoy having here. So, Samuela, it's a pleasure having you here and you, it's, it's your stage. Thanks. <coughs> so, um, in 2009, uh, a new virus spread in, in America, mostly, and um, public health companies. Oh, sorry. No, oh. public health companies fear that a new uh, a new virus um, was exploding, basically in, in America, but also in, throughout the world. The, of course, the problem was that as it was a new a new virus no vaccine was readily available. So the problem that hospitals, but also, of course, um, public health agencies, um, governments as well, had was that um, they couldn't keep up with the spread of the virus because it, it, they couldn't predict where it was going, right? Um, they couldn't predict the path. They just followed the, the virus spread. So. Um, the, the, also, the, the second problem that they had was <coughs> that people, when, when also you feel sick, you don't go directly to the doctor. You go first where? Google, right? So um, Google came up with an idea. And the idea was um, we can, they basically went to the public health agency and they said, we can help you out. And they explained their, uh, their let's say, their strategy to find a patterns. Because as I said before, um, people that, that felt sick, they went first to Google and then to the doctor. And that's why the doctors or the hospitals didn't really uh, catch up with the virus. So Google helped uh, America basically um, with, with, the, with findings, uh, these, these patterns. And they came up with uh, 40 search terms that people used and they sort of um, connected these 40 terms, search terms, with the spread of the virus uh, over time and space. So all of these, of course, real time. Hello, everybody. Didn't, didn't greet you. Uh, my name is Sam and my topic today is why my startup chose a big data project. So before starting, um, I have a question. What is actually data? Because we, we've been talking a lot about big data, but what is data? Data comes from Latin and, and it means basically a given fact or a given thing. So if we have to um, translate data into English, spoken English, we could say that it means stuff, things, every single thing on the internet, numbers, uh, letters, audio, files, everything. So, when we have data, very random data, numbers, for example, and when we gather all the data that we have and we contextualize the data, then we start having information that makes sense. Because if I tell you, for example, one, four, six, seven, eight, three, what does that even mean? We don't know that yet. So we have to contextualize the information and the, the, the data, sorry, and then we have some information. But, and then when, when we have information, we, we know, right? Today, for example, is a very cold day and I'm pretty sure that Starbucks or McDonald's cafe are selling a lot of warm beverages. Why? Because they know, they have data, they have information and they basically know. But knowing something doesn't mean that we understand this. So they understand that there is a connection in this, in the weather, in the temperature, and the connection that people tend to buy more warm beverages, for example. And 
after understanding we have wisdom, right? Um, we can use our intelligence to make better decisions, to use the data, to use information to decide what's best. Um, so what, what is big data? Because again, we've been talking a lot about big data, but what are the characteristics, the pillars, so to say, of big data? In your opinion, what, what, what comes in your mind? Just two words, one, nobody? Come on, sorry? <laughs> also true, also true. Sorry? Oh, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, what's, in your opinion, the, the characteristics? What, what are the pillars of big data? What defines big data? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in big data, when it comes to big data, the um, it's usually characterized with the use of three V, the volume, the velocity, and the variety. So the volume, as we all know, it's uh, the amount of data we have, like megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and so on and so forth. And then we have um, the velocity, so the speed of the processing, like real time or near real time or periodically, like once a month, for example. And then, then, then we have the variety, which is the number of, um, of type of, uh, of data that we have, like audio, um, text, or images. So what's the big deal about big data? Um, if we take a step back now and we think of how information used to, uh, used to be stored back in the old days. These are uh, two clay disks, and ancient society used to, used to store information on these things. Of course, as you, as you can understand, um, there is not much information on this disk. They are heavy, right? Uh, a recent study has shown that by 20, 2007, um, all the data that we gathered was, estima was estimated at 300 exabytes. Now, in two, uh, actually in 2013, the data has quadrupled. So we had, we had in 2013, around uh, 1,200 exabytes. So um, what changed exactly? We changed the way we, uh, we save data, we store data. We changed the way we, we deal with data in general. Uh, we still use disks, of course, but uh, what, what I think is the most important shift is uh, how we, um, how we, how, how the information is being is being processed. Uh, so there is a big shift when it comes to thinking about data nowadays. Uh, this, to me, it looks like information that is static, that is stationary, and nowadays we have information that is fluid, that is dynamic. Let's take, for example, uh, location, which until a few years ago, it, it wasn't uh, put. It was. It wasn't put into into data. Um, nowadays, we know that in a telecommunication uh, career company, probably there is a spreadsheet or a database entry that records where we've been at all time. In these regards information has been datafied, has been rendered into data. Um, so big data, after all, is, is all about prediction. And uh, if with, with the right data, I can guess, for example, who you're voting for or, or what you're going to buy, who you're going to meet, or even if you're pregnant, what disease you might have. And uh, we, we human think that we are very special and very original um, human let's say, creatures. But when it comes to reality, we, have, we are creatures of habits. And when we have habits, we have patterns. And when we have patterns, we can predict the future. So and the topic of prediction is a pretty 
important one um, to us as a young startup. We we've been starting to to deal with with data, um, big data actually, a couple of months ago when we started uh, our beta test. Well, I'm gonna briefly introduce to the startup I work for. His name is Jump Around. It's an app for iOS and and Android and. Um, Jump around allows users basically to uh, nearby users to interact with each other on the basis of uh, common interests and common hobbies and to propose uh, activities and uh, as well as look of course for activities in the neighborhood um, yeah so as I said we started dealing with big data pretty randomly um, at the beginning it was uh, we started with the beta test and then um, course to see whether the we had some bugs to see some stability tests but then when the more we went on the more we realized that it was important not not that much for the data that for the uh, the stability test but rather for for example uh, the information that we started together um, of course the users started to use the apps right so started to insert information in the platform and we started also to see some patterns, some uh, habits that people and the, our users had. Um, I'd like to, to give you a couple of, I'd like to share with you a couple of uh, findings, so to say, that we, that we had throughout the, the beta test um, session. So 83% of the users were students, most, most of them international, and we saw patterns specifically to sports activities. So throughout the test session, uh, all, we saw that almost 70% of the activities proposed were proposed and scheduled for the weekend. That's not really surprising. Um, the sport activity most, mostly proposed was running, jogging, proposed by, again, mostly um, students enrolled at the University of Medicine, mostly women. Uh, as regards cycling instead, which was the second most proposed activity, um, we saw that this activity was mostly proposed by students enrolled at the University of Sociology. Ping pong, actually, has been proposed quite a few times by students enrolled at the University of Philosophy. And beer pong was actually proposed quite a few times as well by students among the age of 20, 22, 24, enrolled at the University of, guess, pick one. What do you think? No, law. Lawyers, lawyers, exactly. Um, so we also saw that uh, girls who were attending the University of Medicine um, wanted to, to interact with other users, with other people, to have to create a new uh, body group, for example, for that precise uh, activity and we saw a huge difference in males and females in uh, the University of Medicine attending the University of Medi Medicine with regard to these uh, findings um, these again these are just to me interesting but yet really shallow data when we uh, the, the pool of the users we we were testing on is not enough to even say that we found patterns, relevant patterns. But still, there's something that we are now aware of, that we weren't aware of before. And um, we found also other kind of habits or patterns regarding time and place, regarding the fact that there is a strong connection between what you study and what, you, what sports you are most likely to do and to propose. There is a really strong connection between uh, the fact Regarding the fact, for example, where you live and where you're going out on the weekend, of course. Um, so big data to us is, of course, is changing the way the rules, it's changing the way we think, it's changing the way we, uh, we interact, it's changing the way uh, we live in general. And we are pretty sure that if all of us are pretty good at handling data, at managing data, it can be just uh, a positive thing. And before concluding, I'd like to, to show you um, 
a joke I read about big data, actually. There are some. Data is like people. Interrogate it hard enough, and it will tell you whatever you want to hear. Thank you. Are there any questions? Oh, wait, um, we need it for the recording, yeah, please. Um, how many users do you have? Uh, how many data points roughly, and what stack are you on? Um, the, the, beta test, oh, sorry, the beta test was conducted on less than 1,000 users. So. Okay, but it's not big data, is it? No, 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 it's not, for, as I said before, the pool of data that we gathered is not big enough. What I'm just saying is that, uh, the, the, the findings of, of uh, the findings that we had uh, are potential, of course, in the future, not not now, as I, I don't know that. Um, uh, when, when I actually met him, um, we, we talked about that, and we talked that big data is a project that we have in the near future, not not now, because of course we are too young for that. But uh, it's still something that we are strongly considering. Okay. And I checked that; it looks really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Um, one, one question I would like to ask. So what were the, 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 the most difficult, the, the main obstacles you, you were facing during your project? Or what, is, what, is, what do you expect to be in the future a challenge, a challenge to, to you and your team? Regarding big data or? Re yeah. Big, yeah. So uh, that's pretty funny because at the beginning we, uh, we, we knew about big data, mm -hmm. but we, we didn't think about us dealing with big data mm -hmm. directly. But uh, as I said before, uh, when we started the, the test, then we saw so many pieces of information uh, in front of us, and we started seeing some things, okay, that's pretty common. That's, that's starting to come up pretty often. And that's when we started to think, okay, that, that's something that uh, for now, it's too big for us, mm -hmm. but still, just we have to keep an eye on it because, uh, of course, that that that's going to be interesting in the in the next months. Um, yeah. So the, the the biggest challenges, of course, was that uh, as we weren't and as we are not expert on big data analysis, um, we were kind of at the beginning um, tricked, let's say, by 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 all the information that we had. Uh, of course, we we. we made a lot of mistakes at the beginning just to connecting it um, but yeah I mean, I mean they don't know how in this in this regard I think is the most challenging thing um, to us mm -hmm. um, I know uh, a startup always needs something uh, do you need anything from the community something some special skills you're looking for some contacts some some, some network something uh, is there something you want to address here for this audience well, well big data <laughs> um, I know um, yeah well in the near future, we are, uh, after the beta test, we are looking out for people interested in, let's say, collaborating with us when it comes to analysis, when it comes to um, analytics of, of mm -hmm. data that we, we, we gather. We have been gather gathering along the time. Um, so please feel free to contact me if you mm -hmm. wanted to join the kangaroo. Uh, what, one question from, from the back, or remark. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, just one question uh, regarding security and, and data privacy. What were the users thinking or feeling when they, towards sharing their personal interest and in data? Uh, can, can you repeat please the last part? Uh, what were the person thinking or feeling when, or willingness to share their data, like interests or geolocation yeah, or, yeah. or friends they would like to do activities with? Yeah, thank you. Um, of course, we, we are not the first one to use geolocation. So it's a topic that people already um, know about them. So we didn't sort of had to convince them about this new technology or this new service. So they knew already the risks, so to say, and the, um, and the problematics, let's say, ethical, moral, whatever, behind it. Um, of course, they, they, we have also a user agreement and privacy policy. We, um, I, I think they read them. I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, they, they said they read it. So, uh, 
pretty confident. But um, yeah, a lot, a lot of apps nowadays use geolocation and use this sharing of interests. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hi, thanks Hi. Uh, for your talk. Um, I, I'm a designer and uh, I do a lot of user research based on interviews, usability tests and, and so on. So that's a very classical way to, to observe people to, to come to um, patterns, behavioral patterns, so that we can identify opportunities uh, to build apps, uh, software, to make things better. So, um, do you have experience with uh, combining these things, so classical interview user research, together with uh, big data projects? Uh, not really. I mean, we, st we started uh, interviewing students at the beginning, you know, for the validation yeah. of the product. Um, I, I don't know who's lying, whether the interviewees or the big data, but there are some differences. Um, I, I think it's hard. Because um, because to me, big data does doesn't doesn't really is, is not about people that tell me what they want to tell me or what I'm asking them, but rather about their habits. I'm not maybe aware of a habit I have or some mm -hmm. things that are kind of hidden. Um, but but still, I mean, interviewing is something that we we have been doing for the last month. So uh, I haven't thought about combining the two things. But do, do you think that? No, I, I just want to want to say uh, that's an interesting point for me because uh, from this classical way, yeah. yeah. So when you interview people, and um, uh, how how come data together so that you get new insights? Are there different insights, for example, and what get you out of of these both uh, um, uh, methodologies, for yeah. example? Uh, that's uh, an yeah. interesting point. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, mm, as you said, it's kind of different. Um, the, the, the output that you're getting out, it's, it's different. It doesn't mean necessarily that one is better than the other. It just, I think it means that it's for different, uh, you know, fields, so to say. Okay, so thank you, Sam.